Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel At Home With Shell. So last weekend we were child free and had a date night in London. I vlogged the weekend to share what we got up to, some fab places we visited, sights we saw and delicious food that we ate. Keep watching for more. We live about an hour on the train from London and stayed at the Hard Rock Hotel located in Marble Arch, just at the top of Oxford Street. I've never stopped at a Hard Rock Hotel before and I know they're all over the world. I have to say I was very impressed and would definitely recommend. After checking our bags into the hotel we made our way down Oxford Street into Soho where we had booked for lunch at Scarlet Green, an Aussie themed eatery. Initially we were just going to have lunch and a drink but they serve a bottomless brunch for £40 each including one savoury and one sweet dish and of course unlimited Prosecco. We were tempted by this and like that you actually get the bottle of Prosecco on your table too. I had the fancy bacon roll which was essentially a deconstructed bacon roll with poached egg, chilli and a hollandaise sauce which was insanely good and Nick had the Bondi breakfast with sausage, eggs, bacon, avocado, chilli pesto and charcoal sourdough. For the sweet option, which we really didn't need, I had buttermilk blueberry pancakes and Nick had banana bread sandwich. We were both well and truly stuffed and honestly a little tipsy by this point too. After brunch we walked to the Minolima store which is a must see if you are a Harry Potter fan and literally only a couple of minutes round the corner. The shop is over two floors with so much memorabilia and props from the films, even the floor had a map on it. There is so much to do in the Soho area from visiting galleries and bookstores to the endless number of pubs, 48 in total. To me, got my heart upon my sleeve. Can I hide the way I feel when you're next to me, girl? We walked from Soho into Chinatown, which is an unmissable sight with striking red and gold decorations, and of course, the best place to experience some Asian cuisine or even sing along to a film at the Prince Charles Cinema. Away from the busy streets we visited a French landmark, yep that's right a French landmark in London, the Notre Dame de France, the first cast iron church in London and inside is home to a series of murals.
We were then in Leicester Square and went to a rooftop bar at the Hippodrome Casino for a cocktail which was really nice up there. We didn't need to book or anything, we just popped in and it was nice just to enjoy the nice weather on the rooftop. When we left we actually popped into the casino as I've never been one before and it was so much fun but I can really see how it was dangerous to get into. I was very happy because we actually won five pounds. <laughs> We then headed past Piccadilly Circus and Carnaby Street making our way back to Oxford Street and obviously you can't walk down Oxford Street without going into the famous Selfridges voted the world best department store. It literally has everything all under one roof. I just love it here, especially the beauty section and I may have treated myself to some new makeup whilst we were there. Did you ever stop and think why I spend too much time just getting ready? Let me be honest, I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me. Let me be real here. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time, girl, I know what's bothering me. After going into Selfridges, we made our way back to the hotel to get ready for the evening. We had dinner reservation at the Goring Hotel restaurant in Belgravia, so grabbed an Uber as it is so convenient. The hotel itself is so luxurious and I would absolutely love to stay here one day. We had booked for a free course menu with a glass of champagne. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and play. The food itself was exquisite, starting with homemade breads and then to start I had pig terrine and Nick had a lobster dish. Prior to the mains being served we were surprised by a truffle risotto too and then for mains I had plate and vegetables and Nick had baby chicken with various vegetables and a delicious shoe. Whenever Nick and I go out, we always share our dishes. We basically swap halfway through so we get to taste more dishes. And then finally for dessert, we had a strawberry and meringue dish and a selection of British cheeses and may have had a bottle of red too. <laughs> We were actually the last people in the restaurant and as you can see I was somewhat merry by the end of the evening. Ah oh well, that is what child free nights are all about. Let's get breakfast. 
After a great night's sleep in the comfiest bed, we headed down to breakfast, which was a buffet. You just had to tell the staff what you wanted and they would get it for you. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't great today, so we made our way to the underground and got a tube to the Financial District of London. Our first stop was to see the monument, an iconic landmark built in the 1600s to commemorate the Great Fire of London. We really wanted to climb to the top as the views look incredible, but unfortunately it was closed when we visited due to the COVID restrictions. Whilst we were here we also wanted to go to the Sky Garden in the walkie talkie building just around the corner but we couldn't get any tickets or for the restaurant but if you are planning on visiting London soon I would try and go as the views over London look incredible. So we made our way from the monument to the Tower of London popping into the oldest church in England. Then next we got tickets for the Tower of London. It's somewhere where I've walked past many times but have never actually been inside and the tickets were £30 each. The tower is full of history and it was so interesting learning more about the place many kings and queens have lived. You get to walk inside the palace itself, seeing where previous royalty lived, where people were imprisoned whilst awaiting torture or punishment. Honestly, a real must for any history buffs out there. Inside the White Tower you'll also find a fantastic display of armour and the line of kings. And of course, the tower also protects the crown jewels, as well as a lot of other treasures. Truly an incredible sight. We spent a good couple of hours exploring the castle and by this point had certainly worked up an appetite so we walked to St Catherine's Dock Marina which does remind me a little bit of the docks at Liverpool then we headed over the Tower Bridge to Borough Market to grab a bite to eat. Burra Market is a fantastic market to buy fresh produce and every cuisine you can think of is on offer.
So after much deliberation, looking around all of these stalls, I had to get the mac and cheese topped with fried chicken. I knew it would be good as it also had the biggest queue, which is also a good sign. And I have to say it did not disappoint. Nick was still fairly full from his huge breakfast, so he got a Bayo steamed bun. We then grabbed a coffee and took a walk along the Thames over the Millennium Bridge to St Paul's Cathedral. St Paul's Cathedral is such an incredible building and a must see if you are visiting London. There are always lots of people just hanging around outside on the famous steps where I'm sure we've all seen pictures of Prince Charles and Princess Diana walking after their wedding. Unfortunately we didn't have time to go inside but you can buy tickets and go around and look inside if you want to. Just around the corner from the cathedral you'll find several restaurants and the famous restaurants from First Dates. But we walked to the One New Change which is a fairly new shopping precinct and at the top of it is an amazing roof terrace and a bar called Madison's. We didn't book, we just turned up and there were still plenty of seats available to sit and watch the tennis with a Pims. And the views here are just spectacular and the perfect opportunity to get some photos in front of St Paul's. We made our way back to the hotel to collect our bags and headed home and we got home just in time for the football. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this weekend vlog to London. If you have then please give it a thumbs up and if you are new then I would love for you to subscribe to my channel.